Hi everyone, Brian Strausser, Principal and Chief Executive at BrightPath. We've learned over time that developing comprehensive and customized crisis management, crisis communications, and emergency plans for your organization is often a difficult and time-consuming proposition. That's why here at BrightPath, we have developed a set of crisis and emergency plans that you can immediately put to use within your organization. Our crisis playbook plans have been written by our battle-tested experts in crisis management, business continuity, and crisis communications here at BrightPath. And we include access to expert advice and support as an option on a 24-7 basis. What I'm going to do in this video is walk through a little bit about crisis playbook, and then I'm going to show you the active assailant, active shooter plan material. Uh, the simplified crisis management framework that we include with the plans and our after action process that's available for you to use. So what's in crisis playbook? Well, when you're buying one of our complex plans, uh, like the active assailant plan I'll show you in a moment, you're getting really three things. You're getting an emergency checklist that's intended for your frontline leaders and employees. It's an execution focused guide that's intended to be used at the location of a crisis, a retail store, a branch office, a school, or another facility. The checklists are intended for local leaders and employees to execute step-by-step -step in an emergency. They focus on the steps that are really necessary to protect your local staff, your visitors, and the facility until they get additional leadership guidance from a corporate leader. The second thing we include is a corporate protocol. The corporate protocol in our more complex situations, well, they're a resource for senior leaders or crisis managers or your crisis management team to lead your organization step by step through an assessment of the threat or incident and then take the right actions. It positions you to get in front of the issue and protect your team, your customers, and your reputation. The protocol provides support to the impacted location. It helps prevent additional pressure on the broader organization and it ensures that your crisis management and communications functions are integrated. The corporate protocols include a simplified crisis management framework, communications checklists and messaging, templates, holding statements, and then an after action process and a form so that you can capture lessons learned. The third part of the plan is communications material, a communications response. During a crisis, time is of the essence. Internal and external audiences expect to hear from your organization in record time today. Early and consistent communication is important to keep key internal and impacted audiences informed. When media calls, what do you say, for example? Our plans help ensure a coordinated response provides you with internal and external messages in these complex crisis situations. Our plans include holding statements to use before, during, and after an incident and then post-incident messages are included to provide guidance to your organization's leaders following an incident. That's a component that often gets overlooked. So with that as background, let's take a look at the active shooter, active assailant uh, version of our plan that's in Crisis Playbook. I'm gonna share my screen here and let you take a look. So here we're looking at the active shooter, active assailant emergency checklist. So again, this is what we give you to focus on at a location that a crisis is occurring. This is the cover page here. And you'll see these are relatively simple. This one's a, a little longer than most at, at three pages of content. But we define an active shooter. It's an event where an individual or individuals is actively engaged in shooting at people in a confined area. And we always start with immediate actions. What do we need to do right away? We need to call 911 if you're in a safe and secure area. And, we, and again, we want the leader to be prepared to stay on the phone with the 911 dispatcher to provide details. And second, you need to provide some key information, a physical description, are they wearing body armor, number of shooters, do you know what kind of weapon it is, number of shots you've heard, the number of potential victims. And from there, we take other actions. If the active shooter is outside of the building, then we want to lock the building down. And so here's how we go about doing that. If the shooter is inside the building, we want to make an announcement if possible. And then we go to the best practice uh, from the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security on, on what to do in an after shooter incident. And that is, if you can evacuate, run. If you can't evacuate, then hide. As a last resort, then fight. And again, we're following the best practice 
provided here by federal law enforcement and the Department of Homeland Security. And then what do we do when law enforcement arrives? And then how do you escalate this internally? And again, the checklist is really only focused on what do we need people to do at the location of the incident right away to protect life safety of your team, your customers, of your visitors, students that are there. And then what do you need to do to protect your assets, your business? The second document here is the, this is where we're looking at the communications checklist. So here for your corporate crisis management team and your communications team, in an active assailant, uh, active shooter incident, what do we need to communicate? And there's a lot of complex communication that needs to happen here. This is an 11 page document uh, in this particular version. We cover some considerations first. We should think about sending a company spokesperson to the impacted location. We want to immediately partner with law enforcement's public information officer. We have some other guidance here about how to share updates and alerts about setting a good communication cadence along the way. And then we get into some statements. And I'm just gonna cover a few of these. We don't wanna obviously give the whole product away. But we, from an external standpoint, we first focus on what's our immediate statement, the holding statement. And that's as simple as saying, look, right now our focus is on our team and our customers and all those impacted while law enforcement does their job. We do not have any other information at this time. As we learn more, we can expand upon this statement and say something along the lines of, we're concerned about our team and our customers and all those that are impacted, and we're doing everything we can to ensure their safety and well-being. We can confirm that X has happened at this location, and those on the premises have been instructed to take shelter, uh, find a secure location as trained. We don't want to share any names or speculate about what happened. Law enforcement is currently at the location and we are working closely with them to learn more information. As this is part of an ongoing situation, additional questions can be directed to law enforcement. We will share more information as we can. As we learn more, we can say more. Post-incident, what are some things that we want to say? If there have been injuries or fatalities, how do we best explain that in our statements? And then we go on uh, to cover additional external communication considerations. And then internally, um, I'm gonna scroll down here a bit to communication. You know, inside your company, you have different audiences you need to communicate to. Leaders will need different guidance than employees as a whole. So on this particular page you see here on the screen, we're sharing details about what the leadership communication needs to be. And then after the incident, how do we um, coach and guide leaders of impacted teams on how to share news and share more information with the team? So there's uh, several other pages of additional content, but you can see it gives you a pretty comprehensive communications playbook to follow in a crisis situation like this. The third uh, part of the crisis playbook product for an active shooter incident is a corporate protocol. So think about this as what do we want your headquarters team, your corporate team to be doing during this incident. We assume that you've established some type of crisis management team, which we'll cover in a moment. So the first thing we want to do here is as the situation is reported, we want to make sure we've captured all the information that we really need to understand. So in this case, we have several questions here about understanding what is happening and getting a full picture of the situation from initial assessment to current active threat. And then once it is ended, what are the other questions that we wanna know and understand and capture as a starting point? Then each of these corporate protocols is laid out as a set of, of thresholds and actions that we should take. So the way we've written this, if there is an active shooter, active assailant situation at one of your company's locations, we're going to want to activate your corporate crisis management team we're gonna to want to communicate who the incident leader is, and we're gonna to wanna to take a set of actions that are outlined here. And that's really what the corporate protocol is set up to do. Each of our complex plans, like the active shooter plan, includes a simplified crisis management framework and an after action process. So here we take a look at the simple crisis management framework, which really lays out first, how do you put together a crisis management team? And we've got some kind of core functions laid out here with their roles and responsibilities. 
we have some key steps about what to do in an activation and the actions that you should take. We have a roster for that crisis management team. And then we have a list of other key contacts that might be law enforcement or outside public relations agencies, um, third party recovery services, uh, grief and crisis counseling services and others. Then we have a number of tools that can be helpful to you during one of these situations. For example, this is a, a crisis management activation alert that your crisis management could, team could send alerting about the incident internally and stating that the crisis management team has been activated. Uh, so again, this is a template that you can then modify to what best fits your organization. We have a standard conference call agenda to be used for the crisis management team. And then as the situation continues to unfold and you're publishing updates to the crisis management team and maybe to your executives or even to your board, we have a situational update template here that again, you can modify to best fit your organization's needs, but allows you to communicate in a consistent way in every crisis about that particular situation and what has developed, what the current state of affairs is, what actions are being taken next. And then again, we have a breakdown of emergency contacts for your organization, uh, how to make emergency calls. And you want these at each one of your sites as well as for your crisis management team. And then lastly, your crisis management, each of our complex plans uh, includes an after action process as a part of this simplified crisis management framework. So this really, uh, in this document, outlines how to follow the after action process after the crisis has ended in order to take stock of your company's performance. You want to capture those lessons learned. You want to take action to update your plans and processes and protocols so that in the next incident or crisis, you're better prepared. And that cycle of continuous improvement will have you continue to get better um, at crisis situations as they occur. It's a really a key, proce a key process of learning and moving forward and maturing your program. So again, this simple after action process covers how to go about um, setting up the after action meetings, how to conduct those meetings, how to capture key information. And then we provide you with an after action report form uh, in a simple bullet pointed format. We recap what has happened. We capture the wins, uh, things that have gone well, and then we capture opportunities. What do we do to be better next time around? And then here are our recommended next steps and action items. So that uh, hopefully that gave you a good look inside of our crisis management, our crisis playbook product rather. Each of our plans for crisis playbook come in three tiers. So there should be something here that any company of any size can afford. Our basic tier is what I showed you here. It's um, branded versions of the crisis playbook material in our brand in a PDF format. They're not editable, but it gives you a starting point. Our enhanced plans are probably our most popular option. In this option, you get all of the source material, all the Word documents and Excel spreadsheets that allow you to put your own branding in place and to customize the plans in any way, shape, or form that makes it best work for your organization. You might add different roles, org charts, branding, or maybe you add some additional steps that are unique to your organization. And then on the high end, we have custom plans. These versions have the same content as our advanced plans. You get the source documentation, but we include 12 hours of our consulting time where we conduct a few interviews with you over the phone uh, or through a Zoom meeting in today's age. And then we develop and, and work with you in an iterative way to develop custom versions of those plans. You get the final versions in editable formats, so Word, Excel, uh, and other creative formats. And then you, continue to, you can continue to make changes improvements and updates as your needs change over time. So that's the basics about Crisis Playbook. We do offer three other services uh, to go along with this, and they're completely optional. They're things that we would need to talk about in an initial consultation. But the first is support for you in the critical moment, in a crisis. And we know that the impacts of unexpected critical events are significant. They can have long lasting impacts on your organization. Your values, your practices, your strategies can be profoundly impacted by a crisis situation that impacts your company. 
We can support you in an immediate crisis as a member or as a leader of your crisis management or crisis communications teams, or we can simply be an advisor to your executives and your leaders. We have expertise in crisis situations of all types across the globe, including violent attacks, workplace violence threats, reputational campaigns, proxy contests, and other high stakes situations. So if you're in a critical moment and need immediate support, you can always call us. Our number is included in the crisis playbook material, but your best option is to have our second offering, which is to have a crisis support retainer where we have guaranteed availability to support your organization. We may have developed some specific plans, protocols, and messages to support you as a part of that. Again, that's something we would need to talk about and put into place contractually first, but that would allow you 24 seven access to our team with a guaranteed response time. And then lastly, of course, we offer a variety of crisis management and crisis communication services. Our whole strategic advisory practice develops custom solutions based upon our experience and your particular organizational needs so that we can address your unique challenges in a way that aligns with your culture. That's a little bit about Crisis Playbook. I hope you found this valuable. Happy to answer any questions that you have. You can drop us a line at any time via email at support at brightpath.com or give us a call at any time at 612-235-6435. Thanks for your time today. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about Crisis Playbook.